Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to a basic 101 slash tips and tricks for the brand new game, Rust. Within the game Rust, your basic objective in the game is to survive, whether it's from the zombies or from the other players around the world. So basically what you're going to do is as soon as you start out within the game Rust, you're going to start out literally naked. You're going to have one rock at your hand, a stack of torches, or I should say one torch with 250 charges on it, and some bandages. So basically when you start off, your biggest thing you're going to want to do is to collect wood. You will use your rock like you would a normal hatchet and you will chop at a tree to fully get yourself about 12 to 13 pieces of wood off of a tree. Once you've gathered yourself enough wood like I have here in my inventory, you'll go ahead and open up your inventory by pressing the tab key. And then at the top you'll see three tabs, inventory, armor, and crafting. When you click on crafting, from here you will have all sorts of different things to craft. Now there are things in the game called blueprints that you will get later on and that will allow you to craft more things and more advanced things. So for starters, you're going to want to go ahead and create yourself a wooden shelter. When you create yourself a wooden shelter, it will allow you to place something that looks just like this here. It is a little one by one box which will be your very first starter home to kind of protect you from the night which will look just like this here. Once you've created enough wood again, you'll want to create yourself a wooden door for 30 pieces of wood. The wood shelter is 50. When you create yourself a wooden door, you will want to place it, which will look just like this. You are the sole owner of this shack now. Nobody else can get into this. Now, that's also if they don't have a hatchet or some sort of C4. People can and will break into your home inside the game Rust. So a lot of people ask in general chat, and the reason why I'm making this video is a lot of people constantly ask, can I break this? Can I break that? How many times does it take to do this? What? How do I open inventories? Those are the things that I see a lot in every trade chat that I go to. So basically, this is going to be a tips and tricks and basics 101 within the game Rust. So how many hits does it take an axe to break a wooden door? So a wooden door, just like this when you get into a basic shack, will take roughly 112 hits with your hatchet of standing here and chopping at somebody's door in order to break into their little shack. Some people might also ask, how many hits does a pickaxe take to break in a wooden door? It takes roughly 56 hits for this massive pickaxe to swing and to fully break and penetrate a wooden door to get inside a little shack. A lot of people ask, if they find a blueprint and learn it, how long does it stay with you and do you lose it when you die? You do not lose blueprints. They will stay with you forever. A lot of people in the game Rust will log back in and find themselves not where they left off. Maybe at a new spawn location, maybe their inventories are empty. Basically what has happened is, is you were probably killed in the night or during the time you were logged off. Just like my son Valadin here is sleeping and laying down, this is because he is logged out of the game. So just like you and everybody else in the game Rust, wherever you log out your character will flop down and lay there. So it is very, very detrimental that you get yourself a house off the beaten trail and uh, don't log out in the open. If you log out in the middle of a street somewhere, somebody will walk up and kill you and loot your stuff. It is best that you get yourself a very well established home, especially if you start developing a lot of uh, materials and a lot of high end stuff. Create yourself some walls and some metal doors and a sleeping bag. A sleeping bag is made simply by cloth and cloth is obtained by killing the local wildlife. Once you create yourself a sleeping bag, place it in your house and you are now going to spawn in that location. You don't necessarily have to physically come here you know to lay down it's just a good idea to lay in your base because then you're a little bit more protected but if you do die out in the wilderness you will spawn back at your uh, back at your sleeping bag here another big thing I run into rust is people asking hey can I break this with a hatchet hey how do I get into this hey how do I break that basically 
with melee axes or anything melee in general, you can break into doors, boxes, barricades. Now, that's wooden doors, by the way. Wooden barricades, ramps, stairs, sleeping bags, storage bags, fires, wood shelters, which are the craftable ones that I've already showed you. And that's about it as of right now. Now, with C4 or grenades, you can break into walls, such as the ones on the side of my building here. You can also break into doorways, which are just like the ones around my door. Metal doors, which is like the one that I have here. And anything that will be crafted and made above this, this particular piece of metal here. Another big thing I run into rust is people asking, Hey, can I break this with a hatchet? Hey, how do I get into this? Hey, how do I break that? Basically, with melee axes or anything melee in general, you can break into doors boxes, barricades. Now that's wooden doors, by the way. Wooden barricades, ramps, stairs, sleeping bags, storage bags, fires, wood shelters, which are the craftable ones that I've already showed you. And that's about it as of right now. Now with C4 or grenades, you can break into walls, such as the ones on the side of my building here. You can also break into doorways, which are just like the ones around my door metal doors which is like the one that I have here and anything that will be crafted and made above this this particular piece of metal here a lot of people ask as well hey what is that airplane I see in the road well as you guys can see in the background right there there's an airplane flying by every one time a day so every hour in the game that airplane will fly by just as you see in the background there and drop one to three packages so the nighttime roughly lasts about 15 minutes, and the daytime roughly lasts about 45 minutes. So once every hour, that plane will fly somewhere around the map and randomly drop one to three packages, which generally contains a lot of really good stuff. It can contain anywhere anything from thousands of or hundreds of rounds of ammo, I'm sorry, to C4, crafting materials, med kits, food, blueprints. Uh, tons of building materials such as metal doors, pillars, walls, foundations, and much, much more. A lot of people also ask, if I do get some C4 charges, let's just say I found some in an airdrop, how many does it take to take down a metal door? Generally, it takes three C4 charges for a brand new just placed door. But since rust does have a decay system that over a while walls and doors tend to decay, it generally takes around two pieces of C4 to fully penetrate a metal door to breach inside of a person's home. A lot of people don't understand how the decay system works. Decaying structures and doors over a time span of around four days, sometimes a little faster for doors, starting from the top and going down from your house. So about over four days time, your structures will start to decay. So what you need to do to prevent your house from crumbling from the top to the bottom is you need to gather the particular resources. For example, this particular house has wood built out of it. So you would need to take wood, planks, and right click your walls and it will fix your walls from decaying along with metal doors and such. So if your metal doors are starting to decay, you need to get the particular low grade metal, right click your door, and repair it. It is crucial to keep on top of this because after a while you're going to come back and start noticing your tower like this one starting to decay because you have not repaired it or it could even be uh, you know, an abandoned tower. In that case, what I like to do is if I find abandoned buildings, you know, buildings that are near my house, I'll slap a door of it on my own and make it a little sub hideout in case I get into trouble when I'm running back to my house and have materials. It's a good alternative to have in case you can't make it home or just want to stay there for the night. Some people have also asked, hey, I've placed a sleeping bag and now it doesn't work. What happened? Well, that means that somebody probably broke your sleeping bag and, and raided your house. Can sleeping bags be destroyed? Absolutely. They generally take about 15 to 20 hits with any sort of a melee weapon to break a sleeping bag. Once it's broken, that spawn point is gone forever and you must find your way back. When starting out in Rust, one of the biggest things that are the odds are always against you is your hunger. One of the biggest things a lot of brand new players die from, not only as bandits and trigger happy people with guns, is starvation. 
So what you're going to want to do is you can even kill a pig with a rock. I've done it myself. Is you want to go up to any sort of animals, your, to your local wildlife, and you're going to want to go ahead and kill them. It generally takes about four to five hits with a hatchet or a rock or anything of the sorts to try and kill a pig. Once you kill it, you can actually uh, hit it a few more times to get its animal fat and its food and everything else. And they can be tricky little buggers. They'll try and and spin out on you and juke you and all the other sorts. Also, another thing that you need to avoid, as you can see in the background, is I've got a wolf after me. As a new player, you're not going to have any sorts of guns to defend yourself. So wolves can be a very, very dangerous animal to encounter. So what you're going to want to do as a new player is you are going to want to avoid getting into any sort of these fights at all costs. If you are caught up into a fight with a wolf, your best bet is just to continue to run. Because as you can see here, this is now my second shot at shooting this wolf. So trying to shoot, trying to hit it with a rock or a hatchet is not going to be very effective. Once you do finally kill one of your local wildlife, in order to claim the materials off of it, you grab a simple hatchet and you start to brutally massacre it. Currently, animal fat, blood, and cloth, and chicken breasts are what you can get off of the local wildlife in the game Rust. Also within the game Rust, another high factor item that a lot of people need are, is stone. There's different types of stone. There's a dark stone, a light stone, and the best thing to use to gather this stuff is a physical pickaxe. Just aim at the rock, hit your pickaxe on it, and you will get the most resources possible out of your rock. So for example, I just got five metal ore, eight sulfur ore, and four stones out of that rock there. Rust is one of those games where it's very hard to determine whether somebody's going to be a friend or foe. So it's really up to you whether or not you want to take the chance in trying to befriend somebody or just go ahead and go for the kill. Because there's been many occasions where you think somebody's friendly, they might be naked asking you for food, and they whip out an MP5 and blast you in the face. There's a lot of other times where they are maybe just a new player to the game and just are looking for a fresh start. And it's up to you to determine whether or not you want to kill them or take them under your wing and help them out inside the game rust. A lot of people tend to get lost in rust because there's not an in-game map or any sort of identifications other than landmarks. So basically within the game rust, you need to learn to adapt to your surroundings and learn how to get back to where you need to go and where major objectives are in the map. Just like real life, your sun will always rise in the east and then set in the west. So those are key factors to know whether where you build your house and where key point things are. So if you build your house on the east, that's where the coast is, the, the, the sun will rise in the east and then set in the west. That kind of gives you an idea of roughly where your north and south, east and west are and that's the best way to determine and to figure out and get your bearings within the game Rust. Home invasions are the largest thing in Rust that a lot of people lose their items, come back to dead characters and have hours and hours of work lost. Each server has large clans of 50 to 100 people, if not more, that will travel around the servers, breaking and smashing and plummaging through people's houses and just taking everything they possibly can and murdering everybody in sight. So just to kind of show you guys to kind of help prevent something like that, the best thing to do is to craft what's called metal doors. They do take a lot of resources, but they are definitely the best thing to use to prevent people and deter people from trying to get into your home. Also try and make your home almost like a maze because putting a one by one house with one metal door isn't going to get you very far. So let's just say for example I have C4 on my character. I was managed to, uh, to breach this door. I've now breached this door with two C4 charges. It would now take me another two C4 charges and C4 is a very hard item to get inside the game Rust. So I would now have to use two more C4 charges 
to penetrate this door. So now this, this door has been breached. Normally this door is closed whenever we're playing, but since I'm making the video, I've left it open for demonstration purposes. So now that they've come into here, they've now got to make a decision. Well, there's two doors. Which one shall we breach? Well, if they do have up to six C4 charges, these folks in particular can breach this door and now get into this room here. So unfortunately, see as you guys just heard there, that was something that was decaying. That was what we were talking about earlier, that little broken wood. <laughs> you got to repair your items. <laughs> um, but once you do breach into a house, there's a very good chance you're going to find this lonely individual here. This is somebody who probably logged out into their house once you've breached in. It is now up to you as a person, as a soul, as a human being, to either kill them in their sleep and loot their items or leave them be and humiliate them by looting all their boxes and coming in and taking everything you possibly can. Nine times out of ten, the typical bandit and player will slaughter the guy while he's logged out, loot his stuff. But a lot of the general, you know, the good bandits, they'll generally leave their sleeping bags so they can at least come back. But you do have those little dirty little scoundrels that will break the sleeping bags. So when you do log in, you've completely lost everything. And that really sucks. So, at any rate, guys... I hope you guys enjoyed my Rust Tips and Tricks Basics 101 video. I hope this helps out all of you who are brand new to the game or maybe just wanted to learn a couple of things or just didn't know how things operated. Everything in the game Rust is very simple and interactive. Everything uses the E key for searching boxes to looking into your stove by holding the E and hitting the open key to check in stuff you've got you know, within the fireplaces. Same goes with the furnaces. If you hold your E key, you can hit open and you can check and see the materials that you've got within your furnaces as well. The game is in pre-alpha, so it does have a lot of bugs. The servers do tend to lag from time to time, but that's kind of a given. So if you guys can look past some of the glitches and bugs that are within the game, you've definitely got yourself a good game and a good purchase on your hands. It is currently $19.99 on Steam, and in my opinion, well worth the purchase. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll see you guys in Rust. Have a wonderful day.